All right, so here's my setup. I've got my plastic drawing plane. I've got my tinted piece of paper with the crosshairs drawn on it. And it is inside the drawing frame. Uh, I've got my wood block that I'm going to be keeping my plastic picture plane in so that I can use it to trace. I've got uh, at least a leaf, you know, at least one piece of fruit. I've got more for my composition. I've got my oil pastels. I've got all the stuff I need to do this assignment. Just like I've done before, I'm using this plastic drawing plane to take this three-dimensional image and make it flat, right? So I'm just gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna squint one eye. I've got it in this wood block so that it will stand up at an angle. It makes it easier for me to look through my plastic drawing frame, plastic drawing plane, sorry. And then I'm doing the same thing that I've done before. I'm drawing the shapes that I see, right? I'm tracing them onto this plastic picture plane as I look at them, all right? And I'm trying to slow down. I can make changes as I go, like I had a little issue right here, so I can go back and I can clean up that little issue. I'm remembering to keep one eye closed and I'm trying to keep my head still so that I can see everything in the same spot. If things get out of arrangement, I can just move my head back so that things are back the way that they need to be. As I'm working my way around, I'm tracing not just the objects, but any kind of shapes that I see, as well as those objects like the leaves, I'm definitely going to trace, all right? And the fruit, I'm definitely gonna trace. But also, like, I've got this shadow down here. Then I'm gonna to try to trace that. I got a shadow over here. Now, obviously, you know, a shadow is not a direct shape, all right? We call it an amorphous shape because it's tough to tell where the shadow starts and where the shadow ends. But really, this is just like guidelines on the plastic drawing plane. So you don't have to worry too much about getting things exactly right. I don't need to put in all the little veins that I see on the leaves. I just wanna put in veins going in the right direction so that I know how to plot these things into place. All right? Bam, I've got my image. Now that I've got that image, I'm doing the same thing that I've been doing before. I'm going to trace whatever's closest to the crosshairs first, and then work my way away from the crosshairs, one shape at a time in each section. You know, you should be getting pretty good at this at this point, but it's always good to slow down, take your time, make sure you're drawing it the way that you see it, Especially as you're getting further away from the crosshairs, it can be difficult to tell exactly how big or how wide those shapes are. Uh, notice the way that I put my piece of paper, all right? Depending on the composition that you want, you could have it in landscape mode or you could have it in portrait mode. It's totally up to you. Because of the way that I had things arranged, I put it in landscape mode. And oftentimes when people are doing this, it's called a still life. When people are doing a still life, oftentimes they'll do a still life in landscape mode just because of how things arrange themselves when they're sitting in front of you, all right?
sketching things in lightly so I can go back and erase them, right? Same way we've been working all along. Adding in all the shapes that I see, the way that I see them. Bada bing, bada boom. Unlike what I've been doing before, I'm working with color at this point. So I'm gonna try to use the colors that I see. You've got all these different colors that you can choose from. So you should be able to find things that work for you. It's always a good idea to start the, to do things in a certain process. At least this is how I do it. So I'll start with the colors that are darker first and then I'll work my way over to the less dark colors, right? So like the leaves are green and it's a, it's a darker hue of green. So I'll start off by putting in that green. When I'm doing that, I'm thinking about what I see in front of me because it's not just green. The veins are lighter. So as I'm working, I don't want to put in the length, the veins as dark green. So I'm gonna leave a little empty spot where the veins are as I'm adding in that green to the leaf. It's gonna make you make decisions working with oils pastels because they're just so different. They're like crayons times 10 because they're not just, I mean, they're even more cumbersome than crayons are when it comes to trying to get down what you see because the lines are so chunky, okay? Uh, but one thing that people do when they're working with oil pastel is you can go in and you can smudge things with your finger and it will smooth everything out and then you can go back into that same thing that you smudge with your finger and you can go on top of it with other colors and you can change the colors you can blend them together the same stuff that's in oil pastels is in paints right it's the same medium it's just applied differently so you can mess with these things a lot as you're working all right, and I'm gonna spend time messing with these things and you can watch.
if you make any kind of mistakes, you can go back and you can scrape away those mistakes uh, with your fingernail. You can just give it a little scratch and it'll lift that pigment up. At least it'll lift up a lot of it. It won't pick it all up. And then you can go back and you can mess with it some more. You're gonna notice when I'm working on this that I'm thinking a lot less about lines than I've been dealing with this whole time, all right? As we've been working on all these other assignments, you've really been thinking about lines a lot. What kinds of lines do you see? You've been building things with lines, all right? But in this situation, I'm really thinking more about shapes than I am about lines. Don't forget while you're working that you're not just drawing the fruit Right? You're trying to pay attention to the shape of any shadows that you might see from the fruit. Right? And you're drawing those things in as well. Right? Try to pay attention to the colors that you see. I know what you're going to say. The first thing you're going to say when you're looking is like, I don't see this color. I don't see that color anywhere, Mr. Powell. Where's the color? you got to try to figure it out. All right? What color would you use? The choices that you make and the colors that you use make all the difference in the world. They say something about you as the artist that you're gonna choose that color instead of another color, all right? Try to get it as close as you can. We're doing something that's realistic at this point. So you're trying to get it as close as you can.
once you've got that drawing the way that you want, it's time for you to add that other non-art to your piece of paper, right? It's going right below my drawing frame. I'm gonna put my name first and last and the date over here on the right, and I'm gonna write a title over here on the left, all right? I'm using pencil, please. Don't work with the oil pastels when you're trying to make these little tiny lines, it's not gonna work. Okay. You can use a pen or a pencil, but something that makes a finer line when you're writing, okay? Bam, all done.